Okay guys, this is going to be something new. Let's try and do this in one take. So, what are we doing here? We are going to try and paint this spell. You could paint anything fiery though. This will work on all different types of fiery stuff. And we're going to be doing it with Series D. So we're going to be doing it with dry brushing. Doing this in one take is going to be a little bit tricky, so the hairdryer may well be coming out. But for now, let's grab ourselves a couple of brushes. And let's crack on. So, why do I have the selection of paints that I do on the table? I've tried to stick to Citadel predominantly uh, because people can get hold of them more easily. We're going to be using some fluorescents though. These are incredibly important. This technique works without them, but you get some real punch with them. And I would say that basically they just make your life a little bit easier. Key things to hold in mind. Fluorescents are a bit gooey. Shake the living hell out of them and just be aware that they take a little bit longer to dry than normal paints. They're a little bit more viscous and kind of transparent. So you're going to want fresh water. I'm, uh, I'm really bad for never changing my water, but uh, with fluorescents I do make an exception. So take our spell off its nicely painted base. So I'll get ruined. Pop it onto here and let's go. Okay, so what we've done with this spell is it's been primed black and then I've primed it with the new uh, white scar spray, which is actually amazing from the front, from this angle, and also from the top. And I've hit it more at the front than I have at the back because I want the back to be dark. Okay, step number one, we're gonna be working backwards here, which is quite difficult uh, to get used to, but essentially, if you think of highlighting normally going up to the light colors, we're gonna be highlighting, but we're gonna be going to the dark colors. So we're gonna go all the way through from our lightest to our darkest. We might jump around a bit. As I say, it's gonna be one take. So let's see how we can start off. Drop of water in the dampening pad, work it in. I'm using a large here. Very hot in the UK at the moment and dry. So I'm gonna use two drops, which is more than I normally would because they'll disappear quite fast. So the sequence of GW paints we have is Flash Gits, Fire Slayer, Troll Slayer, Evil Sun Scarlet, Mephisto on Red, and Abaddon Black. I'm using Abaddon Black specifically because it's got quite bad coverage. Fire Dragon Bright, sorry, not Fire Slayer. Um, that will come into things later, but it's quite a forgiving black to use in worrying situations. So for this one, I think it's actually by far the best part for the job. You can use any white that's got good coverage. I've got Vallejo's here. Now, if you're using fluorescents for the first time, like I said, shake them a lot. If you squeeze them and what comes out the end is, uh, you know, really, really gooey and has no color to it, you've not shaken it enough. Or if it's brand new, you might just need to squeeze a bit of that out the way to get through to the good stuff. Um, that's the medium uh, that the paints come with and it's no good for anything. It's absolutely useless. It'll take forever to dry as well. If, uh, if, you've, um, if you've got a higher proportion of that than you should. Okay, let's get cracking. So I've made my brush a little bit damp. Not sure if you can see that. There's a slight sheen on it. Essentially, my brush now feels just a little bit colder to the touch. Temperature is a really good metric to use when you're working with this stuff, because if it's too wet, it'll feel very cold. And if it's just a little bit damp, you'll, you'll just feel your palm get slightly cooler. It's going to take a little bit of the white off, take a little bit of the yellow into it, a little bit of the orange. Okay, so where are we going with what? Well, with this, we're basically going everywhere. It's going to look a little bit crazy at this point. Make sure it's dilute. If you get any hairs in, just pick them off. I'm using a new brush here, so they tend to shed a bit more in their first use. If I can't reach anywhere, I'm going to drop down a brush size in order to be able to reach into it. And rather than going back for more paint, we'll be going back for more moisture to help the paint that we've got leave the brush. Okay, so what we want is to have the, the brighter stuff be towards the front, where the flames are the freshest, and on the inside, so on the inside of these sockets, for example. And then as it tails away and it gets cooler and cooler and cooler, it'll go towards black and basically become smoke at that point. Now for me, painting flames is quite hard. 
and it's the first bit that you need to just get over. Um, it's not going to look amazing, it's not going to look perfect. Very often you'll do the first bit then realise what you did wrong and have to go back and do a little bit of uh, playing around with washes or something like that to fix it. That's fine, just get your first stage down as fast as possible. Now because we've mixed our flora in with a white, we've got this kind of weird turbo peachy colour. That's okay, we're just looking to get a foundation. Make sure it's in all the gaps. I'll actually jump to a different brush now. We'll make sure that we get in there. We're probably going to go in there with something even lighter at some point in the future, but this is just to make sure that it doesn't get missed. You can see that I'm basically using this as a wash. The reason for that is that I only want it to get into the recesses. I'm going to hit all the raised areas naturally anyway, so that's the purpose of that. While I've got it, make a little bit more of the mix. It's a decent sized brush by the way, I'm using a three. And I'll water it down and this is going to make sure that those recessed areas behind the bits that we've stippled, even if they're the black areas, they're now going to have light mix in them. The colour's not so important here, it's just the fact that they're lighter, so you could basically do this as a, uh, as a white wash made of paint if you wanted. Very sloppy as you can see. One thing to remember is that flames are pretty random, so you don't have to worry about, you know, your stuff being smooth, consistent or perfect. In fact, you might well help yourself by uh, making a few mistakes or having a few areas that do look, you know, uh, like a jumping colour in comparison to the areas next to them or stuff like that. Now of course black will cover pretty much anything we're putting down on this model, so you can go as far towards the back as you want. Uh, you can't go too far even if there are areas that you're intending are going to be completely dark. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to water down slightly more towards the back. All right. Have a look at it from all angles. Make sure you don't have any excessive pooling. Pooling is fine. It's actually going to be helpful. It's what you did the wash for, but you don't want too much anywhere. If you've got any areas that stand out as a bit light, you can give them a second dab. Okay, hair dry time. While those back sections are drying, I'm going to take the opportunity to put down pretty much a pure whitewash over the front sections. This is going to be what our fluoros go over and allows them to be crazy punchy, so filling the eye sockets, gaps between the teeth, the hollows of the cheeks. As I said, don't worry about stuff being perfect. That's absolutely not the goal here. And if you worry too much about it, you may literally end up with a, a worse result. So try to let go, just chill out and uh, push some paint around. You should begin at this stage to kind of see the ideas taking place. And for me, this is the part where I normally start worrying a little bit less. All right, pretty much dry. Okay, so back to the dry brushing. Now you'll see me cleaning my brush a lot between steps. It's a really good habit to get into. My brush is gonna end up in a much better state than it would be uh, because rather than you know making it really messy then having to clean it at the end, we're gonna clean it as we go throughout the process. Just fluoros now. It's pretty scary. Still got a bit of white left in the brush, but hopefully not too much. 
and what we're popping down here everywhere, but uh, yeah, you know, making sure to reach the recesses in particular. Is that light, fiery center. It's important to keep this thin. Like I said about the floros, they will take quite a while to dry. That's why I came prepped with the hairdryer. So all those areas that we made white, the hope with this is that this is going to land on them and because they're over that white. Over black, they basically do nothing. Over white, they do quite a lot. You'll probably find that you use a little bit more of these than you would do of normal paints. That's just because they're very, very transparent. So you need to put a little bit more down on there and it needs to be going over a light color to get its kind of bite and hold on. Okay, probably leaving behind the bits that we want this bright now. So what I'm gonna do is push into the recesses. We know they're where they are from experience from our washers. You can, of course, always catch these with a the wash later. That's absolutely fine. And then really importantly, on this model in particular, catch the inside of the jawbone, which is quite awkward. We can give those areas a little bit more of TLC towards the end. But for now, that's quite a good foundation. What we're going to do is start introducing our normal colors. Now, these are going to look really drab in comparison to what we've got in our palette because what we've got in our palette is fluorescent. Don't worry, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is we've got a yellow and orange mix. I'm going to do a transition stage. Just the orange. I'm going to start building out with the yellow inside it. Each of these stages, you want to cover the next step in the model, like absolutely cover all of it, 100% of it. And the previous step you're on, you want to go over the raised areas. Just takes a little bit of practice. You go forwards too far, cover everything and then you work your way backwards over the areas that we've already hit. If anywhere in the recesses gets mixed, we've always got washes to lean on and to rely on. You could step down and use a smaller brush, but if I can get away with using bigger brushes, I always do. I much prefer it. Another thing you can do to help reaching areas that are hard to hit. So going back for more paint, go back for more moisture from the dampening pad. That'll help the paint leave the brush more readily. A little bit of white, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. starting to see it beginning to take shape here. Still needs a little bit of faith at this point that it's all going to go okay. Give our brush a little clean. You can clean it on the model, can clean it on the palette, doesn't matter too much. I'm going to step into taking off Fire Dragon Bright. At this point I'm going to leave behind the fluoros which will make a dramatic difference to just how uh, the colors will and should look dull in comparison. It's fine if they do. Put it back in this place before it gets really hard to hold. Okay, we should basically be at this stage now where things start kind of accelerating really rapidly. Make sure that we've got our base coat. And I'll leave the tip of this flame. That's going to be my uh, my contact point with the miniature. 
it's important for it to be stable and uh, it's more important that it's stable than, you know, I paint all of it at the same time arbitrarily. I'll probably leave this top one and that middle one. <laughs> okay. So now we start working our way with the colors that we're using back towards the front of the model. And as soon as we stepped into this troll slayer, they became quite a lot darker, less vibrant, and that's really going to stand out quite nicely. Evil Sons. The fist on which is actually a really kind of deep black red. That water is getting coloured now, so if we go to any white or very light steps, it may well be a good idea to swap our water around. Got our orange here, take a tiny bit of the red. Mephiston is strong. Sorry. Evil Suns, we're not at the Mephiston yet. Really starting to build up nicely now. Always start towards the back because if you screw up, it doesn't it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're going to cover that stuff over anyway. Back for more water, not for more paint. Just trying to keep this smooth. We're putting quite a lot of layers down, so it's important that we keep the moisture going all the way through. Otherwise, we'll cake it up. You're more likely to cake it towards the front because you've done more steps there. All right, straight red now. Make sure you keep going from all angles. Look at it from the top and the sides. Underneath doesn't matter so much, but those jumping around, especially going to the top is very important. You'll look at your miniature while you're painting it. You'll look at it from above. Uh, when you're not painting it, when you're playing with it, or when other people are seeing it. Big boy from Mephiston. This has got extremely good coverage by Red Standards. And that means we need to be extremely careful with it. Um, exactly the opposite of the reason that we've specifically picked a bad and black with its bad coverage by Black Standards. Makes it more forgiving. Uh, Mephiston is not forgiving. It's strong. So what I'm going to do now is the bits that stick out the most, um, not all over, but for example, this lump sticks out a bit, this lump sticks out a bit, this lump sticks out a bit. I'm going to start concentrating more on those, leaving the others in the recesses or just hitting them more gently. I'll hit them more anyway, just naturally, but of course it's up to you. If you want to specifically select somewhere, you can. take the opportunity to clean my brush a little bit. I put too much water in the pad. Not quite ready for the black yet. Maybe one more stage with the red. At this point, take my own advice, and I'm going to hit all of these tail areas from above. Now, I'm going to start taking black. We're going to do this with utmost care, even using a gentle black. So what we're going to do, take some of fist on and take a tiny smidge of black, rub it in, work it in, work a lot of it off, probably too much, just as a result of being scared. That's better than too little. Now because this is so much darker, what you'll get is these areas in here um, where there's tiny flecks and details on the paint. This will pick them out more readily. With fire, this works fine, so I don't think you need to worry so much. Um, it just looks kind of sooty and, and, you know, like it's glowing or it's embers or something like that. With other effects, you maybe want to take a bit more care. I think we're okay to go to the front now. Whoops, that's 
our first big smudgy mistake. Take a higher proportion of black now. Spend our time at the end and then carefully Soft touch, held towards the back of the brush. Hold this really securely, the model, and take your time. This bit looks great down here. I wonder what I did better there. Back for more water. And then for the scariest step, majority black. Obviously we've still got a lot of red in the brush, so it is definitely a ready black. It's not a black black, but it's quite strong. Back for more moisture. I think I'm confident here to go for what almost feels like a pure black. off with this. Use it more towards the back. There we go, pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is quickly give this a clean. It's not looking too bad at all considering it's just been used with pure black pretty much. I'm going to grab this and we're gonna brighten up a few sections selectively. So, first step, some more white. Sometimes you can get away with just using the pure white here. might be able to here actually. So well, the flames are starting on the back of the skull. Probably nearly enough. That'll do. See, the floors haven't dried nearly as much as the other paints. And then make sure you cover everywhere that was white. You can always go back and dot with pure white if you wish. We'll leave the nose like that. There we go. One burning head. We're done. I won't pay close to the camera because it, it'll start getting very confused. Um, luckily, down there on the table, it shot it in the colour that it actually is. God knows what's going on now. Um, very different tutorial for us in terms of the format. No, it's a hide, we don't hide things normally, but you know, it's one take. So if you found it useful, let us know. Um, would you like us to show, you know, like 90 minutes in one take sped up with no audio or something like that? Um, there's a lot of stuff that we could do uh, using this format if you'd find it useful. We've also changed angles a bit, so you're pretty much getting a first person you know, perfect exactly what I'm seeing while I'm doing it. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's worked out well. Got some stuff coming up. This is part of an army. We're going to round off our Nurgle series because I haven't learned from anything and I painted an army in 10 days recently. This is part of it. We love the Grumpy Cabbage. So yeah, we've got a another series coming up. I completed an army. I think it's probably the best one I've managed on a time budget yet. Very successful uh, end result and also 
I ended up winning some stuff in gaming with it, which was really not expected because I haven't played the latest edition of the game that I'm playing yet. So um, yeah, that will be coming up soon in the near future. If there's anything you'd like to see in one take, you know, completely, we'll speed it up, we won't cut anything out. I don't know, like power swords, rusting, it, it, you know, painting a single piece of a single miniature. Give us some suggestions if you like the format. We're super happy to do them for you. If you've got any thoughts about the format that we did, let us know. We'll read each and every comment. Thank you very much for your views. And we'll just jump into whatever it is we're painting next, which is armies. There's a lot of armies coming. Ian's back off holiday. I'm about to go on holiday, so I'll probably be intro the next one with a baguette in my hand um, and some more other horrible stereotypes going into France. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to it. So while I'm away, uh, we'll be bashing out some more army progress ones. I've been nailing it for the last couple of weeks to make it to the event in time. So you'll get to see me stressing out for a deadline, which is everyone's favorite thing, apparently. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.